Hey, what's up, guys? We're back at it again at 1 a.m. As soon as the Explosive Cousins Draft Challenge is released, to play it as fast as possible. So let's speed through and see what we can do and hopefully pop off with some wins. So the strategy in this challenge is try to pick cards that are versatile, that are going to give you value regardless of what happens in this situation. So like Skeleton Dragons, prefer that over Dark Prince, even though Dark Prince is a great card since it has a shield so it can defend against Sparky. It's got splash damage, it charges, so it's kind of a win condition. Skeleton Dragons are good anti-air, and you need anti-air if you're ever going to win in these draft challenges. Because sometimes your opponent will pick Balloon, which is one of the best win conditions in the game. So I have ways of activating King Tower, so i rather go and choose the Evolved Wall Breakers here. It's nice because we have Skeleton Dragons to destroy the Bomber. And then also on top of that, I feel like Wall Breakers are going to be a bit harder for him to counter. We're going to cycle our Fire Spirit here. Hey, he's going to give us some love. We'll drop some love back. Generally, in this type of situation, it's important for us to go and cycle our Wall Breakers as much as we possibly can. I do think that Evo Bomber is generally better. So if you are given the option, what evolution do you pick? Most of the time, I would choose Bomber. Especially since the bomber can counter the wall breakers, so it's going to be nice to be able to drop that and just be like, hey, I got a good trade. And then the Evo Bomber, it's dropped at the river and it's able to guarantee like a win condition. It's like very strong. It's one of the best three evolutions in the game. If you guys are wondering what the top three evolutions are in Clash Royale right now, it goes as follows Going in for the Knight, Skeletons, and then Evo Bomber. Those are the three best ones. Sometimes people are saying that Evo Bomber is not as good as the Evo Knight and the Evo Skeletons because the Evo Bomber can be predicted and it's kind of obvious when they're going to drop the Bomber at the river. But if you mess up against it, it's incredibly punishing. If you split up Evolved Skeletons in the middle and then you have Royal Hogs or something, you're almost always going to get value and you'll bait out spells on both sides. So when you're dropping one Elixir, you're probably going to bait out a two Elixir spell on both sides. So you're going to get four Elixir with one, which is a plus three trade, which is horrible for most opponents. So that's why a lot of pro players are preferring to run Evolved Skeletons. And Evo Knight just has a lot of tank value. So those are why those are just a little bit better than the Evo Bomber. Especially since Evo Bomber can die to arrows, there are ways of outplaying it. Obviously in draft, when you don't have arrows, uh, the Evo Bomber is a menace. Fortunately for us, we were able to finish it off there, so that was good. I want to go in for a cannon cart, and it's good that we chose the Skeleton Dragons, because now he has limited anti-air answers in his arsenal to be able to finish off our cards. I could zap this or I could fire spirit. I think zapping is just a tad bit better. And I want to go in for wall breakers. As I said before, it is probably going to be the best card for us to be cycling as much as we can. Since there is only one evolution in the deck, it is rather easy to keep track of. In regular Clash Royale matches, it's incredibly tough to keep track of evolution cycles. So it's not very easy when there's two evolutions coming at you and you're like, wait, you cycled one evolution. Now I have to pay attention to the bomber too. It's kind of a chaotic game then. Okay, he just lost his tower guaranteed. There's no way he's defending this. If he goes in for a bomber, he's not going to be able to finish off these uh, aggressive rascals. Also, he lost the bomber. That's so lucky, honestly. I don't really deserve that, and I'll take it. And it makes me a bit happy to see it. So we're going to go in for a cannon cart here. We're going to go in for a zap as well, just to stop that ram rider from charging in my face. And if we're able to clobber down with a quality defense, I might be able to win the game. But the evil bomber is going to be a menace. He makes a prediction bar, bro. Or maybe that wasn't a prediction. Maybe he was just trying to get fancy with us. I don't know. I just wanted to finish everything off, so ideally we can go in for this and then zap on the goblins. The spear goblins are going to die, and the goblins behind are completely going to get cleaned up, and then we can go in for rascals in the middle. Everyone that we're going to be playing against early on in this challenge are going to be better than the guys that you play against later on in the challenge. If you're a free-to-play player, never play these challenges as soon as they come out, because there's a lot of pro players and top players that rush into it to complete it as quickly as possible. Also, another thing is, if you're winning like I am, and you're getting towards the end of the challenge, and you're starting at the very start, you're going to play against people with the same wins as you. So, right now, the person that we're going to be playing against has at least won their very first game. There's no possible way for them to have gotten to one win at, you know, three minutes into the challenge, or five minutes into the challenge, without, uh, without playing just only one game. They can only play one game there, so that's why, you know, they've won all the matches they've played. So that's why you never want to play it at the very start. If you're a pass rail player, it doesn't matter. But if you're free to play, you don't really want to have that experience. So Goblin Drill is generally a little bit better uh, when we're running Evo Bomber. But I did mess it up. So <laughs> our drafting is slightly suboptimal today, to say the least. It's fine, though. What's life with a little bit of chaos and mis mishaps? Also, if you guys haven't already liked the video, um, consider doing that if you want to see me stream these as early as possible at 1 a.m. in the morning for me. Obviously, I stay up for you guys. I try to make these challenges as quality as possible, and I, I try to 
give tips and tricks on how to win the challenge as early as it comes out. So as soon as it comes out, you guys can come to my channel and then play the challenge afterward and not have to worry or wonder what to do. So that's uh, kind of what we do. We play through it, we show you guys what it's like, and then you can attempt the challenge yourself without any losses or worries. And uh, yeah, if you like that, definitely leave a like on the video. It supports me for free and it allows me to do these things as a full-time job. It's really cool that I'm able to do that. And uh, I wanna say thank you guys because I'm very fortunate to have the job that I have. I, I'm reminded of that every single day um, with my friends and just people I'm around. I'm like, they, they just tell me how lucky I am and I, I realize it. So <laughs> thank you guys. Um, all right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yo, yo, yo. Our boy up super late. Yeah, man, we are up super late, aren't we? Uh, all right, let's keep going. The play field and your box are drastically out of focus. Uh, what do you mean? I feel like it's not drastically out of focus. I think we're probably fine. Um, I mean, obviously the camera is not optimal right now because it is still slightly broken, but we are going to fix that soon. So unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's not going to be extremely optimal, but I don't think it's like terrible. Um, all right, we're going to go in for Spear Goblins here and then we can Poison on this and then we can go Goblin Gang. I just don't want to lose the game. So Poison is going to be the optimal strategy there. And then obviously we want to go for Bomber. I think the Bomber splashes on to both of them and then they will die. So that's good. All right, what's your opinion tag? Who's the most explosive cousin? Definitely Bomber. Bomber is the best one to play if you guys want to increase your chances of winning for uh, reasons of like, first it counters wall breakers. It has one evolution cycle compared to two. And it also generally will give you an opportunity to play defensive and offensive, which is a bit better when you are running in a draft challenge. In draft, the most, uh, the most strong cards are always the ones that are versatile, the ones that can be played in multiple scenarios. That's what I would prefer to do. Also, the one thing that I do like about what we have here is the ability to go and drop things in the middle and just take another tower. Because I don't necessarily care if I lose a tower here. I can go in and play very aggressive with our Eagle Bomber, lock onto his goblins, and then shatter any expectations of this guy coming back. Very easy win, as you guys can see. It's also weird to see the Spear Goblins jump over the log like that. Didn't expect that to work out. But you know what? That was a slaughter fest. We completely clobbered this guy in a couple seconds, and we're already on to the next one. Have you ever played pro? Yeah, I played this game professionally for a while. Um, I won $5,000 in a tournament, and I went undefeated. Uh, it was sponsored by Google. It was called King's Cup, if you guys don't remember that you can actually type in sir tag king's cup 2 and then it should come up i did lose unfortunately uh against uh nova yao yao he was pretty op though all right all right all right we're gonna go in for probably a goblin giant just because it's a win condition that targets towers Definitely going to choose arrows since we don't want our skeleton army to die. And I think spear goblins are nice because we don't have anti-air answers. So that's why I chose the cards that I did. I think it will be pretty successful for us depending on what his win conditions are. Uh, since we've got Mega Minion, I feel fine cycling our spear goblins at the start. He's going to lose his bomber and then I can go in for a goblin giant at the river. Thoughts on Pompeo? He's actually one of my best friends in uh, Clash Royale. He's a very, very nice guy. I really like him. I mean, he's got hundreds of thousands of followers, so... Um, it's nice to see someone still stay that humble, uh, despite being super, super famous. All right. We got to go for this, and then maybe we can get, like, Spear Goblins down to go and kite everything again. The two-time. For the two-time, my dudes. Maybe the three-time, actually. Wait, oh my gosh. Calm down, man. Ah, uh, this is looking pretty brutal. The thing that we can do is we can just take the damage from the Giant Skeleton and not this Mini P.E.K.K.A., so I think that's okay. Oh, 1984! <laughs> a dystopic novel has been released in the Clash Trial Arena. <laughs> Written by George Orwell. All right, we're going to go in for arrows here, and we're just going to clean that up. We're fine. Also, uh, what have you guys been up to? Let me know what life has been like. What are your goals for this year? I have so many goals, man. So some of the goals that I have, I want to be able to do a pistol squat, which um, is a lot of balance. So some of my friends are telling me, hey, Jake, you are definitely strong enough to do a pistol squat. You just don't have the balance. I want to do that. I want to be able to travel a little bit more, make more memories with friends, and really be proud of how I am as a person with my friend group. Um, last year, one of the things that I didn't do is I, I didn't really uh, talk to my friends and spend as much time with them as I felt like I should have. So that's this year. I kind of want to really make a more meaningful, uh, more meaningful moments with myself and with my friends, and that's a huge goal of mine, actually. Anyway. 
I also, I obviously, I have a lot of goals with YouTube, but I think I've iterated on those so so often that I feel like I'm a kind of a tape recorder. Like, hey, I want to create content on more games and have another Supercell game that's released. I have said that so many times. Anyway, um, getting back to business here, we are kind of standing on business. If we can go in for a Goblin Giant and go for Evil Wall Breakers, I don't think he's going to be able to defend this very effectively. We're just going to sack the tower in the left because it's at 60 HP, so it doesn't really matter that much to me. Goblin Giant's putting in mad work, and both the wall breakers lock on, so that's good. I'm going for a Battle Ram here, and he's going to go directly into the Skeletor Army. So, Evil Bomber is obviously kind of griefing me in this game, but there's always a chance the Battle Ram connects, and it doesn't, so that sucks. Not going to lie, I didn't expect that to work out so poorly for us. Man, I could actually lose this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this guy is not taking any prisoners right now. Looks like we're probably going to lose. I mean, there's always a chance, but it's not looking good. We literally lost both towers. Battle Ram is just such a bad card. <laughs> not gonna fit. <laughs> I do not think I got good cards in this draft mode. Um, but very, very well played on our opponent's end. So GG. And we'll go to the next one. Very well played on his end. Give him some love and we'll jump on to the next one. How to play against you. Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of streams that I do that you guys get to play against me. And I say play versus me. And if you beat me, you get pass Rao. We're definitely going to choose the Evil Bomber. I'm going to choose Mega Knight because I want to get Counter Push. And I'm going to pick Phoenix because it counters the Electro Dragon. And then lastly, we want to be able to kill Phoenixes with, uh, you know, or we want to kill Fly Machines with Phoenixes. Just when I run out of stuff to watch, I see the stream every time. Hey, you guys can always count on me. I will be streaming these challenges as soon as they're out. As long as you guys like the videos and subscribe to the channel and watch these things, then, you know, I'll be doing them every single time I can. Thank you guys again for uh, stopping by the stream and being here. So Electro Dragon comes through. We drop four Elixir in total. He drops five. So now we drop five with this Fire Spirit. I'm going to go uh, Dark Prince here. And then I think I just Mega Knight directly on top of the Ram Rider and kill him. The good thing that we have rolling is we've got like seven plus four. So 11 Elixir in the right. And he doesn't have much to stop this because he dropped a Ram Rider, which was five Elixir. So he's down a lot. He can't necessarily defend this unless he's got very good mechanics. He doesn't have the best mechanics in the game, so he is going to get destroyed here. He might activate King Tower against the Dark Prince, but he misses that as well. The one thing that you guys can do is choose Mega Knight or choose cards that give good counter push in this type of game mode. Because a lot of times people are given draft cards that they aren't used to playing. If they aren't used to playing, they're, they're kind of just going to get smoked, right? They, they don't necessarily know what they can and can't do with their cards, so they're going to make mishaps and they'll make mistakes. All right, we're going to go for a Fire Spirit here, and then we'll go for a Dark Prince. And then we could Graveyard if we wanted, but I think it's a bit better to just play passive when we know that our opponent has Electro Dragon, and we know that they could go for a Ram Rider afterward. If you drop too much Elixir in Single Elixir, a lot of times your opponent will punish you, and you'll just lose the game. So I would prefer not to do that. Uh, I'm going to go for a Mega Knight in the back, and then egg him on, uh, go in the other side maybe, and uh, if he does, then that's cool. Because then he's probably going to lose the Phoenix and the Mega Minion. Um, is not necessarily... Wait, did he drop Mega Minion? Or what am I tripping? I'm tripping. And also, the Bomber just runs away. That's kind of bad. Anyway, we have a lot of stuff blowing at him, so we're fine. But definitely could have been a lot better than what this was. <laughs> just looking at this game, like, obviously, I could have played this even better than what we did. Uh, we do snag this tower, so we can go Dark Pins here on the right. And we should be able to solidify a win. All right. Why does Dark Prince and Mega Knight look like brothers? Uh, just because they got, you know, the medieval weapons, the little spiky pom-poms, the cheerleader Mega Knight, and then, obviously, you know, the, the, the Evo Bomber is pretty funny and derpy, too. A lot of cards in Clash Royale feel related. Love the videos, Jake. You always make my day. It makes me happy to see people like you in the community. For real, seriously, guys. Like, if my videos make you happy, let me know, because it makes me happy. It's a big circle of happiness seeing other people um, enjoy my content. It makes me feel like what I'm doing is productive and it makes me feel fulfilled. So thank you, man. All right. Why are you up so late and early? Because of you guys. I wanted to create this content as early as I could. My day is incomplete without watching your videos. Dang, man. Uh, I find it funny how you stream late at night. Yeah, I want to get the challenge done as soon as it's possible. It makes sense, though, as a content creator to get the content out as soon as possible so then people get it and then they can watch it like if i wait too long then you guys are gonna be like i already completed the challenge why are you doing it now doesn't make sense right all right so it's important for us to choose goblin giant here 
because Goblin Giant is going to be able to kill the guards and maybe be able to break through and allow us to do something. But he's got Fisherman and I gave him Fisherman, so maybe it would have been better for us to not do that. It's hard to say. I feel like Goblin Giant is one of the most reliable win conditions in Clash Royale. It's generally one of the best win conditions to pick in every draft game mode. So I universally default to like picking it. I generally default to picking the best cards in the game. Okay, so if he doesn't have Lightning, we're fine here. If he has Lightning, we might be losing. Okay, I'm going to go for Elixir Golem. You have to think of Elixir Golem as a 7 Elixir card because you're giving your opponent 4 Elixir. So think about it from a standpoint that you're giving your opponent Elixir. You never really want to be dropping it unless you can guarantee value. And since we had a lot of cards flowing at our opponent where he overcommitted into us, I felt confident cycling there. Wait, are we going to allow the Fly Machine to stay alive? If that Fly Machine stays alive, our opponent's going to take a huge dive. Okay, yeah, he's going to do a ton of damage to us here. You know what? We can possibly defend this with the Evo Bomber set since it is a broken card concept. If it is able to get that last shot and not die, that would have been huge. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as planned. However, we do have Fly Machine, and we're going to be able to slaughter the Skeleton Dragons and finish off any remnants of his cards. So in this interaction, you could go for Elixir Golem in the middle, but then I'd be delivering four Elixir on a silver platter to my opponent, and then I might just lose the game. So I don't want to do anything ridiculously stupid or too foolish right now. We might go in for some more whimsical decisions and try to steal some towers later on in the match, but right now it's kind of like, okay, we're up, let's stay up and not go down. Anyway, we're going to get the bandit in the middle. It's going to be dashing on the tower in a sec, and then the minion's going to lock on the tower too, so that's really good value. Always, always, always cycle your bomber when you can. Bowler is a phenomenal card in this challenge as well, since it knocks away wall breakers. It actually is pretty sturdy against the bomber. It's just a good card all around that I would recommend using. So because he went in for the ram rider there, I think it's better for us to deliberately cycle more stuff and just ignore since we have a Goblin Giant possibility in the middle, and he doesn't have that much Elixir, and he spent five, and then he has to deal with the Bomber and the Hunter. Sure, he might be able to take out most of our tower, but if we snag an entire new tower, that is definitely good for us. Also, believe it or not, Skeleton Dragons are single targeting cards. They might say they do splash damage, but they sure as heck don't in most situations that I play them. They're kind of horrible in that spot. Very fun, though, when you're able to get that done. So I bet you he goes in for a Ram Rider, and that's exactly what we anticipate. Notice how I double drop my cards incredibly quickly. So the Ram Rider should die with no damage. Just because I know there's interaction, uh, I will get better trades than my opponent most of the time. And that's because I've played this game a lot, right? So you might not know that interaction. You might not be like, oh, I don't feel comfortable defending there. And that's okay, as long as you play aggressive and don't overcommit. Like right now, I know that I can't defend, so I'm not going to spend Elixir stupidly and drop a Hunter here. If you're really desperate and you don't understand the game, you'll be doing decisions like that, and that will cost you wins. You'll lose a lot more games because you'll be overcommitting. So another thing that you can do if you're unaware about draft interactions is just go into classic challenges, test out new decks every single day, and you can get better at the game that way, just playing a new deck. Like going to Royal API or checking out my videos that I upload every day at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can go down here and be like, hey, I'm going to go test out a deck in Classic Challenges. Not only does that give you gold, it also gives you cards to upgrade your cards in the future. And also on top of that, it allows you to try an expansive array of new cards every day. And that allows you to have fun. It also makes you feel like you're progressing. And then you don't have to deal with the BS interactions of pay to win where, you know, some cards that you play against on ladder are just higher level than you, and you might lose because of that. Um, so just always take that into consideration. Challenges are OP. Hey, I had my board exams, and it went well. Got a 90. Uh, thanks for all of your positiveness. Dude, it was not me. You, you deserve that 90, my guy. If you got a 90 plus, you studied for that, you worked for it, and you deserve it. Congratulations. All right, you play so well. You should start a YouTube channel. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's what my friend told me. Um, you know, that that was literally what he told me. That's how I started my YouTube channel. He's like, you're really good at this game. You're always top 10 in the world. Maybe you should start a YouTube channel. I'm like, all right, sure. Let's do it. And uh, that's what happened. The rest was history. Okay, this guy is going to Magic Archer on me. So he played this exceptionally well. Magic Archer is generally a pretty bad card, but, you know, not in that instance. We're going to bomb on top of the Magic Archer. We'll snowball here. And I would like to go Goblin Gang and then possibly go in for an Ice Wizard on top of that so then it doesn't take my tower. Oh, I missed the Ice Wizard timing. You know, you, you said I play well and then I do that. <laughs> then I pull the unhinged plays. Do you like dark humor? Um, It depends what you classify as dark humor. If it's like 
absolutely horrible where it's insulting another person's, uh, you know, just identity, then I don't love that. For instance, if like you decide to hurt someone else in the process of making a joke, like for instance, if you are like, I don't know, saying something really awful about someone that you know, I don't necessarily love that. In fact, one of my biggest red flags in people is people that talk negatively of their friends or other people around them. Um, so if you do jokes at other people's expenses, I don't necessarily love that. Dark humor though, as long as you're like not hurting other people, is fine. Like if you're amongst friends and you're saying whatever you're saying to your friends, that's totally fine. But, you know, if you're perpetuating a narrative that uh, might hurt other people, I don't necessarily love that. So it's really dependent. Um, I, I guess uh, not as much anymore, but I definitely did have a lot of dark humor before. Um, I don't know. I do find a lot of things funny that I probably shouldn't. Um, there's definitely jokes that I can incorporate in my videos that I, I've chosen not to because sometimes they are a little bit, I don't know, not necessarily for everyone. Um, like, there's some jokes that we've done where, like, the memes weren't necessarily, uh, they weren't necessarily <laughs> what I would expect to uh, be able to put on a YouTube channel. So, I don't know. It is what it is. You guys will still sometimes see some jokes that you're like, wait, why is this on YouTube, Jake? What are you doing? But, hey, I have fun with it. I Every video, every edit, every single thing that I put on my YouTube channel is something that I personally vibe with that I think is funny. Um, and I think that's important. If you don't like your own videos, then I don't think that you, you're really going to be successful as a content creator. If you can't watch your own content, how do you expect other people to? Yeah, I don't know. Um, generally, my humor is reflected in my YouTube channel. So if you guys like my humor, then you probably will like my videos. If you don't like my humor, you won't like my videos. But that That is my humor. If you watch my YouTube videos, that's generally my humor. I would say that it's like 90.9% .9 of my, my humor because I've trained my editors in a very specific way. I'm like, I like this. I like this. I think that's funny. That wasn't funny at all. Remove that. Let's redo it. Um, you guys probably don't, well, you definitely haven't seen the behind the scenes, but we remove so many edits and memes and we always reiterate and improve on the better versions. And then I always want to add and improve the things too. So do you imagine the edits when you're doing YouTube videos, when you're speaking poetically while you're live? Um, I do imagine some edits and I will tell my editors like, Hey, I want this edit here. Uh, it depends on the day. It depends on the video and it depends on what we do really is, um, situational, but yeah, sometimes did you watch Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah, of course. Any video edit that you guys see in my channel, generally I've watched the show or I've watched the, uh, stuff. If it's a culture reference that I don't understand, I will ask my editor and I'll make them explain it to me. <laughs> I'll be like, I am boomer. Please explain. <laughs> And they'll be like, Jake, you're stupid. I'm like, I know. I understand. Uh, have you ever considered doing a meet and greet? Yeah, it just depends where. I mean, uh, if I did a meet and greet in Seattle, I think uh, maybe like five or six people would show up. So it's not necessarily something that would be that cool for me to do, I think. Um, it'd be nicer to do it at gaming events where there's a lot of people congregated together that it's like a higher propensity for people to be there. Uh, every single time that I go to events, I tell you guys, I tweet it out, SirTaxCR, if you guys ever want to follow me there on any media. If you guys do follow me, um, yeah, you know, hit me up at events. See me there, always come up to me. If I'm with a friend, family, a girl, anyone, just, you know, come up to me. It doesn't matter. I'd love to see you guys, for real. Um, I'm not just saying that. I really do like seeing you guys in person. It's, it's fun. Anyway, um... Not necessarily looking good in this game right now. This is probably going to be a loss. Sometimes in draft, you do get kind of hor like horrible situations. I didn't really remember that he had a wizard and kind of flocked my minion horde right into that. Mr. Minion Horde migrated uh, <laughs> north for the winter and this game went south for us. All right. We're going to go for Goblin Barrel and we'll see if we can still pop through with wall breakers and maybe we can still win this game, but it's really not looking good. Okay, both wall breakers connected, luckily, but uh, that was just pure luck, honestly. If he goes wizard here, I might just lose. If he wizards on these minions, I actually just lose the game. I don't think he will. He's gonna Evo Bomber, yeah. Can we magic Archer on this, or is this stupid? I feel like this isn't smart. 
I think I just lose, honestly. I don't have any mini tag for the wizard. Like, I can't stop the wizard. There's no card in my deck that kills the wizard. So as you guys can see, sometimes you do get screwed. I literally have no counter to wizard in my deck. There's nothing I can do. I, like, have to go, like, goblin drill and then minion horde on it. It's just so bad. It's unbelievably horrible. This is, like, one of the worst plays that I've been forced to do. I can rage those up and maybe one of them will connect, but still not enough. And then the wizard locks onto my tower and just lose. This is just very unlucky. If you do play against a good player, like obviously this guy reached like the, the five wins very quickly. So he is going to probably three crumb me right now. Um, he's a good player and he hard countered me. So I just can't do much here. I don't know what else to say besides uh, that was just extraordinarily unlucky. We'll jump on to the next one. That was the uh, That was the only game today that we lost out of the two that we played that, you know, was just unlucky. Hopefully we can win the next seven games in a row. It'll be very, very, very hard to do, but I believe we can pull through. I would win this challenge without any losses if I played it later, but you guys know we, we're trying to challenge ourselves and play against the best players as early as possible in this. So let's focus up and try to win now. Uh, I'm full focus mode at this point. We're going to choose Royal Ghost and then he can't counter the Rascals. It's 3 a.m. where I'm at? Yo, dude, you're on East Coast then. I love the general vibe of your content. Thanks for putting a smile on my face. Thanks, dude. Do you have any pets? I do have a uh, dog and two cats. Fiji, Luna, and Rowdy. Rowdy is the dog. He was actually meant to be a show dog, and then his ears got a little bit too big. If your ears get too big or, like, your face gets too big as a dog, you can't become a show dog. And genuinely, I, I don't know if being a show dog is, like, super omega ethical. Like, the dog's... Probably don't enjoy walking down a, uh, a walking down and doing that. So, you know, I'm glad that we were able to save him from that life or whatever. His his ability to outgrow the show was uh, was exactly what he needed. So that was kind of funny. Anyway, let's focus in this game. Let's go for a Goblin Barrel Fire Spirit. If you guys identify what I just did there, I went Goblin Barrel first, then I dropped the Fire Spirit, and the Fire Spirit still tanked for the Goblin Barrel. So we're in a very good spot. We can Evo Bomber. And the reason why Evo Bomber is so broken is exactly what you're about to see. Look at how much damage I get. Kind of crazy. Like the fact that a two elixir cost card is allowed to do that just doesn't feel good for me. Like I personally am not a fan of how Clash Shroud decided to integrate that into the game. Anyway, that's just my preference. Uh, I wouldn't have done that if I was them, but hey, that's their game. That's uh, their decision. Uh, so Snowball plus Fire Spirit full counters the Wall Breakers, as you guys saw. We're totally tryharding in this, and I do not expect to lose this one. But I could very well lose some of the other games that are coming up, and I'm slightly scared. I really don't want to lose today. I don't want to reset. I haven't had to reset any of these games uh, recently, so um, hope we, uh, you know, draft is a little bit RNG based. But I did lose the first game because I didn't play as well as my opponent. The last game, I genuinely don't think I would have been able to win. Uh, the Wizard just completely cooked all of my cards anyway it is what it is um it's always nice to be honest with ourselves too like the first game i should have just been better played better been a better player and then the second game it's nice to be like ah uh, you know realistically there's nothing i could do unless unless i just played a lot better than him but sometimes that's unreasonable to ask of yourself oh he predicted the evil bomber oh he's still gonna take oh he didn't take damage i'm surprised I mean, this guy is great. He's really, really good. I mean, he's reached five wins without uh, losing out yet. So he's definitely decent at the game. I'm going to go Ram Rider into this. I think, like, just cycling a Snowball afterward is optimal. I want to be able to knock the Wall Breakers away and not take any extra damage. Wow, we actually played that perfectly. I'm really proud of how I played that interaction. And then we can go and spam Rascals here at the river. We can go for a Bomber, and then we can just keep going. So as you guys can see, if you are given the option to pick Bowler, you should always pick Bowler. He's going to go in for an Inferno Dragon. So let's go for a Night Witch, start spawning some bats, and keep going for Goblin Barrels. Wow, it's crazy how much I have to think against these players uh, early on in the challenge. It's just like, it's an entirely different beast. It really is a whole new world out here. I'm going to go for a Snowball, and then I can go for an Evo Bomber if we want. But yeah, I, I don't think that's necessary. I think it's better to go Rascals. Yep, he's going to predict the Evil Bomber. Like, he knew my card cycle when he drops his cannon card at the river. Very good player. So, much easier game since we have Bowler, by the way. Like, it, it, it's a drastic difference. Having that one card can be the difference between life and death. He's going to Barbrill. We'll just, like, Snowball, and then I think we can go for Evil Bomber here. He's still blocking it. But the Bowler hits the tower. Dude, we have two ways. The Bowler almost got another shot. It's crazy. Do we, do we win this? 
All right, he's not back to a good card cycle. Okay, so he's not as good as I thought he was. Um, if he was better, he would have dropped the wall breakers behind the tower, and it pushes the goblins off of the tower, so then the wall breakers are able to counter it. Or maybe he just doesn't play wall breakers, but he was a pretty good player with every other interaction. He made predictions. He identified my card cycle, but he didn't know that one trick at the end. The wall breaker is directly behind the goblins uh, on the goblin barrel, and it'll push the goblins off of the tower, and that's the most effective way of countering a goblin barrel with wall breakers. We didn't know that placement. So maybe, maybe he's still good. He maybe just didn't understand that. All right, we're going to choose Ice Golem. We're able to kite units around the map. Electric Collector is unfair. It is so stupidly strong. And I kind of want to choose Miner because Goblin Drill isn't very good at countering Electric Collectors. However, Miner is very good at it. So when you're choosing cards, not only are you choosing cards for yourself, but you're choosing cards for your opponent. You're making sure that they don't have cards to counter you. So that's why the Miner is just very strong for us. Oh my gosh, he gave us arrows and he has Princess. That is a bad life choice, my guy. That was actually just super not smart. I'm surprised that he chose that. For me, I, I would never. <laughs> I could never. You know, we, we're not allowed to lose anymore, right? Come on, guys. Give me some good energy out of here. We got this. It's going to be light work. Hopefully. <laughs> Yo, he's down so much elixir. What is he doing? He activated King Tower and he's running Graveyard. Well, I got to be honest with y'all. That spell might have just spelled his own doom. I believe that this is going to be spelling out victory for us real soon. So I can go for the bomber here. I should be fine. Actually, it's better for us to go arrows because Goblin Cage probably gets one shot on my tower. Ask me how I know that. I just know too much about Clash Royale. However, he activated King Tower, so he didn't even get that one shot. Wait, 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 wait. There's no way that his, his princess hurt him, right? Oh, we don't get to lock him to the tower. I'm surprised the Evo Bomber didn't do that. It still locks in the tower. Maybe he leaves. Does he just lose and leave? He, I bet you he leaves the game. There's no way he's still playing after that, right? There's no shot. Let him cook, bro. <laughs> I mean, he cooked his chances of winning for real, for real, my guy. There's no way. He ran it back. He actually ran it back. The definition of insanity is knowing that it won't work and doing the same thing again. This guy is a certified savage. He's definitely not average. Thank you, my dude, for the good laugh here. So, let him win. He is so... No, I can't w let anyone win. And also, like, I don't think he's bad. He's definitely not noob. He just messed up. Um, I, it would be dishonest and severe cognitive dissonance for me to say that I haven't messed up and played poorly in some games as well. You guys probably have played poorly as well in certain games. Maybe you don't understand how to play specific cards. Um, I prefer not to be like, oh, he's noob, like, just be mean to him. Like, maybe he played poorly. You can say he had a bad game, but let's not say he's a big noob. We can say uh, people that are mean, that play really poorly, are, are newbie, but that's also still dishonest. Like, you, you have a sample size of one game. You don't really have enough to extrapolate and be like, they're bad. He, I mean, he did not make the best plays, but yeah. He doesn't seem like a bad player. He's just like poisoned on top of the Musketeer. Pretty smart decision. And then we can go for arrows here. And the Muskies are going to lock on a tower. So that might just secure the bag. Let's Miner in front and then Evo Bomber. He's going to drop something to the Miner and then the Evo Bomber wins us the game, right? Is he really not stopping that? Oh, he knew. See, he's not dumb. He ended up dropping a counter to the Evo Bomber later. Like people like this, they understand card cycle. This guy's not bad at the game. He's definitely not bad at the game. He's also got pass, no pass route, and he's at seven wins at the very start of the challenge. That's bold. That is very bold. The puns at 4 a.m. are just amazing. Ah, uh -huh, thanks, man. Yeah, dude. Bad jokes hit hard when, <laughs> when it's later in the day. And then you realize that you're just, uh, you're not necessarily the smartest sometimes. You're like, ah, maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't very funny. But it is what it is. Okay, so we're definitely going to choose Mega Minion here. Rail delivery is going to be annoying, but it's okay. I'm not choosing Elixir Golem. I don't necessarily think it's very strong. I mean, it is good in draft in a lot of environments where, you know, the opponent doesn't have a good counter, but we've got Bomber and we also have Mega Knight and Princess. So I don't necessarily think that's going to be great for him. Los Firecracker is the guy's clan. Okay, well, that's interesting. Oh, he's using the Cannoneer. My dude is pay to win out here. Okay. All right. I see you, my man. I see you. Go Bomber. Going to use his delivery early. Interesting. I would never do such a thing. I could never do such a thing to my mental. 
A lot of elixir, my guy. All right, we're going to try to snowball on top of the Inferno Dragon, possibly. Nah, I'm not going to. I'm going to let the Mega Knight jump, hopefully, on the tower and then get the damage that we deserve. I'm not going to overcommit because he's going to have Elixir Golem like that. Yeah. The strategy for us is maybe go Goblins afterwards. So the Inferno Dragon locks onto that and doesn't... Ooh. Okay, I guess we're going to Snowball. We don't lose the game to the Inferno Dragon. Still absolutely awful in most environments, but we can Mega Knight here and maybe uh, get something in the counter push. Recoup some of the Elixirs. Mega Minion afterward is probably optimal. Also, the Princess on the right-hand side is nice. If we're able to kill the majority of the Inferno Dragon, we might be able to just Princess our way to victory on the left. Beautiful. Cool. So if that Mega Minion um, allowed us to kill the Princess counters, then we're in a good spot. Like, he, he doesn't necessarily have good answers to the Princess right now. Let's go for a Ghost in the right. This is going to be obnoxious. And then the Princess might take his... Oh, maybe we can go Goblins. Yo, our mechanics are clean and we're being real mean. Hell yeah. We're going to snowball so the princess might be able to kill. Beautiful. Look at my mechanics today, guys. This is like 1.37 a.m. and we're killing it right now. You love to see it. Our princess is still alive and then we're going to be obnoxious when we start spamming the other side. How is that princess still alive? What is going on in this game right now, my dude? How is this happening? That princess has stayed alive for a freaking century. Eventually, she dies to two barbarian barrels. That was the second coming of Bar Barrel. That was awesome. That, that is why I play Clash Royale, guys. That's what makes me happy. Genuinely, I, I don't get super psyched about evolutions doing a lot of damage. Uh, but when a card like that, when you keep a princess alive forever, that is what Clash Royale is meant to be. You get value out of outplaying your opponent with a three elixir cost card that doesn't instantaneously win you the game. But man, those interactions is what made me love this game more than any other game in the world. That is why I've played Clash Royale for as many years as I have, and that's why I love the game. Don't necessarily love the fact that he's elixir golem me and spamming, and this is going to be successful. We actually just lost. <laughs> Wait, I outplayed him so hard and I lose? What? There's no way. <laughs> there ain't no way. <laughs> the duality of the game sometimes. The duality of the duels. There's no way. We played so well. Okay. I'm not I'm not even gonna fib. I do think the Elixir Golem was a differentiating factor in that game, and I should have drafted differently. But wow, I played that so well and I lost. I don't think I've ever been so proud of a game that I've played that I've lost in my life. But hey, it happens. The hee hee haw moment. I I I don't know. Like I've played really poorly in so many games, and I've won because of evolutions before. And I play so well with the princess and I outplay him the entire time and it's not enough to win. I think they got a nerf evolutions. I think that's that's what we need to say. Oh, that's crazy. That's pretty funny. That's why Elixir Golem needs a nerf. I don't think Elixir Golem needs a nerf. It's just, uh, it's a strong card in a draft because it does a lot of damage. So if the opponent just spams all their stuff and they all in and you don't get enough Elixir to in time to all in them back, like the guy would have lost his, he would have lost his tower because the elixir golem gives me elixir, so the counter push would have killed him. But I didn't have enough time to unleash the counter push, so I guess it was good timing for him, unfortunately, and well played, I guess. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I guess he played well, if you want to say it like that. But I also don't think he played as well as us during the game. Sometimes elixir golem, like it will allow them in that very specific opportunity if they just all in, they will win. It is what it is. I should have drafted better and then I would have won the game is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it doesn't matter that much. We're just going to stop the baby dragon from locking onto our three musketeers and I think we load in with a win. That nerf that miner, man? Nah, miners, miner doesn't need a nerf. Man's got carried away. He's still... No, no, no. I didn't say I was going to win the game or anything like that. I was just really proud of keeping the princess alive. Um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's kind of uh, a reality in this game. Like sometimes you... Uh, I couldn't have done much differently in the actual game. I don't think I could have played it much differently. I played pretty much perfectly. However, I should have picked Elixir Golem and then I would have won the game. Because without Elixir Golem, the guy wouldn't have been able to do that amount of damage. But having no Elixir Golem in my deck, I was able to make better plays throughout it and it was more satisfying. Anyway, it is what it is. I, uh, if you rewatch the game and see how I kept the Princess alive, there's no reason for me to lose that. 
It's just uh, unfortunate uh, interactions. I think with draft, sometimes you just have cards that cannot kill other cards. So for instance, if you have no anti-air and they drop a balloon, you'll just lose. A little bit unfortunate. Anyway, we do slaughter this guy senselessly and we will jump on the next one. Hey, watching your gameplay helped me improve so much. The last time I finished 1,700 ranking, do you think poison should be nerfed? 1,700 in the world is really good, so congratulations on that. And I do think that poison does a little bit too much damage. Are you able to add new emotes, Jake? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that'd be fun, kind of fun to do. Can you uh, win a GC challenge with an Elixir Golem deck? I can, but I'm not going to do it on the stream today. Today, we're just going to be blasting through the draft challenge and trying to pop through with uh, no more losses. Do you play volleyball? I played it in high school a little bit. Uh, I didn't really do anything else other than that. All right. Are you ready for the Goblins, Evo? I guess we'll have to wait and see, my man. All right, we're going to choose Electro Giant. I think it's a bit better here against Expo. Uh, it guarantees that the Expo is not going to be able to break through. You kind of just throw it in the Expo's face and you're like winning. Oh, Elixir Golem. The, uh, the devil is here. The devil is here. It really be that way sometimes. Always cycle your bomber so you can get to the Evo. What's your height? Uh, I am 5'11 and a half. So, unfortunately, not six feet, but... If I choose between six feet or 5'11", I would love to say six feet. <laughs> but in reality, I don't know, man. It's 5'11 and a half. That is, my, that is my height. But if we really poof up my hair, if we really poof up the hair, I gotta poof it. Poof it. <laughs> uh, you know, um, when I grew out my hair and I never saw the uh, barber for a while because I, I just didn't go outside that much, um, in 2020, 2021, um, I ended up, uh, I ended up having really poofy hair and I was over six feet then. I was over six feet. <laughs> uh. All right. So we're going to try to go in for like an Evo bomber with Elixir Golem. And I think I win the game. it will be very hard for this guy to defend. The shoe will do the trick. Yes. The shoe does do the trick. The shoe does the trick for real. All right, we're going to go for a Bomber here and Baby Dragon. Oh, wow. I didn't even make a prediction. We're going to say it was calculated, though. We predicted those minions, guys. I, I never, I'm never disingenuous with you guys. Like, if I don't make a prediction, I, I if I get lucky with it, I can't lie. I, I just can't sit here and be like, oh, I know that he's going to do this play at this time. And I understand that this is the right strategy. Like, if I know that, then I'll say it. But sometimes I'm even wrong in my videos. I'm like, I think he's going to have a Royal Giant deck. He freaking drops like Golem in the back first play. I'm like, oh, that's sad. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's cool that way. So you guys know I'm like not a robot. It's, it's, it's a little bit better to be authentic that way, in my opinion. I'm 5'6", too, says Ojas. Nice, dude. Yeah, height, um, height's kind of cool. Like, uh, I think some people obsess over it a little bit too much for sure. But yeah, I don't know. There's uh, benefits of being tall and there's benefits of being short. That, uh, the biggest benefit of being a little bit shorter is, oh man, I'm so jealous of you guys in airplanes. And if you guys travel and you're shorter, man, it is the best thing in the world. Being able to sit not in the aisle seat so you don't have to stretch your legs. Like I have to sit in the aisle seat because I like, I, I feel so claustrophobic, um, like not doing that. But yeah, it's uh. It, it must be nice to be able to sit in the window seat and just like not be disturbed by anyone. See the good view from the window. Like it, it's a vibe. Is Little Prince still the number one card except evolutions? I would say Little Prince is probably the best card in the game because it enables you to cycle more evolutions and it's versatile. If you're talking from a stats department, actually Archer Queen is better than the Little Prince. The reason why Little Prince is better than Archer Queen is because it enables you to cycle faster since it costs less elixir. And also on top of that, the other benefit that Little Prince has, it, is it has a built-in knight inside of the card, so it allows you to have a bit more versatile of a deck. So if you get it from that department, it can just spam a lot more, and it's better in a meta where you want to spam as many cards as possible. I uh, appreciate the late night. Yo, dude, I, I appreciate you being here. Sir Tag, uh, hey Jake, when is your marriage? Dude, not for a long time, man. I have no idea who I would want to marry. And then also on top of that, 
Um, I also do, like, even if I had that, even if I was, like, um, in a relationship for three plus years, um, which I was, like, a year ago, I was in a three year relationship. Um, I, I still didn't even know, like, when I wanted to get married or if that was even a possibility because I think, like, people change a lot. One thing that I, I think is if you're younger, for me at least, when I was 20, I was drastically different when I was 23. And then recently, you know, I'm 27 now, just turned 27 a couple days ago, really. And the change between 26 to 27 was the biggest year of my life. Like, I am so much different than I was just because I had some life events, right? Like you have family interactions that you didn't have as you get older. You have interactions with, you know, relationships because they're more serious than high school crushes, right? Um, things happen and it, it, you build upon it as a person. Um, one thing that happens for a lot of people is like they go through life, they have hardships and they kind of just keep having damage and they keep having damage and they never process things. If you're able to process things, you become a better version of yourself every single time. If you guys ever have bad things happen to you, for the most part, they are recoverable. Not everything, but a lot of things are. So take it in stride and try to be like, what can I gain from this? And if I can't gain anything from it, I'm doing mental push-ups so my mental is stronger for the next events that will inevitably happen in life. And I'll be better prepared for those. That's the way that I look at things. And um, yeah, I'm just super thankful for the position that I am in right now. Because I was in a really bad spot and then it turned around and I became to be in the best spot I've ever been in my life. Right now, I can confidently say that objectively based off of like all the things that are happening in my life, overall, my happiness, not every single day, but most days is significantly higher than it's ever been in any other point in my life, which is quite cool. Anyway, um, we're going to go for Goblin Giant here. I actually used the Goblin Kate, the Goblin Drill on defense. We got a whole lot of goblins. We vibe in. All right, we can go for a Mega Minion here and then also go a Kanakar in the middle. I do think we secure a dominant win. So, yeah, no worries here. Just good games and good vibes. Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for the advice about love and being strong. Yeah, no worries, man. I like saying stuff like that on every stream because you never really know what people are going through. That's the other thing. Um, you know, I, I talked to a couple people yesterday and today where, you know, I thought like, you know, everything was going super well for them at all points in time. You never know. You never know what someone's going through on the other side. So always try, try to treat people that you meet with compassion and just be considerate. If someone's having like a rough time and is kind of like on edge or not like necessarily performing very well in some aspect or, you know, maybe like they're, they're just like a, a little bit, I, I don't know, not something that you would be like, like anticipating, right? Maybe they're going through something. So I, I always try to like, um, put that stuff in perspective and meeting more people really changes the way that you see the world. And if you just stay in your bubble and you only talk to your friends that are like-minded the entire time, you're never going to get challenged. You're never going to learn, um, more about the world. So I love talking to people from, from different cultures, different places. Um, yeah, like, and seriously, I'm not even joking. When I was on Martha's Vineyard, uh, when I grew up, I only talked to white people and Brazilians, and that's it. And they were, everyone was pretty much the same. That was it. There was no culture, there was nothing. And I didn't understand like half of the food that I love right now. I didn't understand any of the culture. I didn't get to experience any of the places that I loved going to for traveling. It was just going to Florida, sitting on beaches and doing that over and over and over again. That was my vacation. That is what I did. It was rinse and repeat. It was boring. It was sterile. It was awful. It was devoid of anything cool. So yeah, if I could say anything that has made my life better, meeting new people, experiencing new things and checking out different cultures and always saying yes to a lot of things that aren't necessarily going to hurt me, right? New food that is kind of out of the box let's try it if i don't like it i'll never have it ha i'll never have it again you know so uh, it's nice to talk to people that you know have grown up in different places as well because they're able to be like hey you know my life was like this and i'll be like wow 
I'm really thankful that my life wasn't like that in that capacity. And I'm really appreciative of the things that I was able to bring, get brought up by and have in my life. Um, or you're like, oh, damn, that's actually really cool that you had that. Um, maybe I can integrate that or try to incorporate that in my life when, you know, they, they had something that was better than your, yours or like something that is just a really cool concept that you never even knew about before. I don't know. That's the type of stuff that has happened to me a lot in the past couple years. Anyway, getting back to business here, we're vibing. We are vibing. Like, one embarrassing thing that I'll just tell you guys. You know, I had like a rice cooker and stuff, and uh, this is... This is like the most stereotypical, stereotypical white thing you guys will ever hear in your freaking life. Three or four years ago, I had rice and burritos all the time, and I did not wash my rice. I guarantee you, with uh, thousands of people that are going to watch this right now, there's going to be one person, at least, that does not wash their rice. You gotta wash your rice if you guys are having white or brown rice or anything with starch. Wash it a few times, and if you don't know what that is, Google it. Uh, it will it'll help you out. It's, it's really healthy, and uh, when you're making Mexican food especially, you want to have your rice washed. Anyway. That was something that I did not do, and it is very embarrassing. Anyway, let's keep going. Which country has the best players? In this game, I don't know. I think Japan, probably, man. Like, in Clash Royale, a disproportionate of good players are from Japan. It is ridiculous how good they are. Um, I don't know. For whatever reason, Clash Royale has a lot of top ladder players that are from Japan. And it's a smaller country too, so it's just like not something that you would necessarily expect, but hey, how it is. Yo, yo, yo. Uh you even wash minute rice? Uh the rice that you like cook in the microwave, I don't I, I don't wash. Because that's like, you know, you just cook that in the microwave. But anything that I cook in my rice cooker, uh yeah, I definitely do. Alright, let's get it. Let's go, let's go. No mommy's way. Pokemon Emerald. Hey, what's up? Thank you for the $5 dono. Appreciate the vibes. Pokemon Emerald is really fun. I played that so often growing up. It was actually probably my number one played game. It was probably my number one played game. I went to the Elite Four or the Battle Frontier and I copied Pokemon in the PC and then I traded it over and I spoofed Rare Candy so I could level up my stuff faster. I know, I know I'm an incorrigible human being, but that's what I did, all right? Anyway, it was kind of funny. That's a fun game. Yeah, Pokemon Emerald was a lot of my childhood. Anyway, we're, we're winning every game right now. I guess I just need to start talking to you guys about Mimi stuff, and then I just win. That's the strategy. You guys remember the chant? Just win, just win. Guys, in the chat, spam, just win. I need it right now. I need to dominate this last game so we can say we won with zero losses. <laughs> Imagine someone just skips to the end and they like miss the three losses that we had. There's gonna be one dude that does that. And if you're if you're that person, I love you. I love your face. I appreciate you. Yo, Palm Soros, thank you so much for the dono. Appreciate that as well. Hey, you lost the cannoneer. Let's go. Wait. We activate King? There's no doubt we can. Let's get clean with it. Yo, we're showing you the good mechanics out here, boys and girls. If you are unaware, that is how you snare a Mega Knight. I thought unaware and snare was a good rhyme. I was just like, let's go. Let's do it on the spot. Let's, let's pop off with the mechanics in and out of the game. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit proud of that. I, I shouldn't be, but hey. It, it, it's 2 a.m. here, and we're still spitting rhymes. We got this. I'm literally Dr. Seuss, apparently. And wow, the Magic Archer is making our opponent need a doctor because that is brutal. As long as we're able to defend with a goblin cage here, I believe I can go goblins on everything else. Oh my gosh, never mind. Never mind, this is going to hurt. How much is it going to hurt, my guys? Ah, it's a, it's a moderate amount to say this. It's, oh my gosh, he's going to fireball me. What do I do? Well, you're my favorite Pokemon. I choose you. I have no idea if this is going to work, but we're spamming everything that we have. You best believe we're spamming everything that we have. We're arrows in here, so we force a fireball. It's worth it. Four elixir for three is something that we'll take any day of the week. 
Okay, locks Goblin Cage. He fireballs here. Let's go Goblin Barrel. He fireballs as expected, right? Like, he called it. So smart, guys. I'm so talented. <laughs> I'm not really. It's an obvious assertion, but hey, it works. No Magic Archer, so then we don't lose, so we can arrows afterward. Obviously, the Baby Dragon is going to come down. It's not really griefing me or anything like that. What if I go, like, Miner, but it takes time for the Miner to spawn in, so let's go Goblins. Then let's go in for Goblin Barrel. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Evil Bomb Room. Evil Bomb Room. It, it, it has to be done. It has to be done. In the spirit of the challenge, we whisk him away with the Evil Bomber. I, I feel like... It was a recipe for disaster allowing this thing into a draft challenge. Like, what did you expect? For it to not dominate the game? What are you thinking, Clash Royal? You know what? Maybe they want you guys to play the Broken Evolution so then you go and buy the, like, Pass Royal and get the Evil Bomber. <laughs> Maybe you guys understand how broken it is. But if you lose against it enough, you probably already know how OP it is. So I think that's a stupid uh, assertion that I said. So erase that from your mind. That is, like... So cynical, it's unbelievable. Anyway, we collected it and we get the emote. Let's go. Let's go. And they actually don't make evolutions purposely broken out of the start. Because if you look at Ice Spirit, Bats, and Valkyrie, they were all trash. But when they make broken evolutions, boy, do they make broken evolutions. Oh my goodness. Yo, look at that thing. It's beautiful. It's so sinister. It's spicy. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's stream, make sure to drop a like on the video. Subscribe because I post videos every single day at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I also end up doing live streams as soon as they come out every single time that there's a challenge. So you guys saw I completed it within the first hour. Wishing you all the best of luck. Subscribe to stay connected for when I do this. Take a look at my channel when you guys want to learn how to beat the challenges or just have some tips or maybe just someone to play the challenge along with you in the future and uh yeah wishing you guys nothing but luck and a lot of love let's go and spend our stuff in the shop before we peace out so if we go and buy this is this worth we already unlocked the bats evolution so we get a thousand cards there's a thousand elite wild cards I feel like that probably wasn't worth it all right we're 200 things away from uh getting that so i'll probably get that at soon anyway i'll see you guys later peace out girl scouts and thank you for being here love you guys